In this video, I would like to explain the gains from exchange in the neoclassical framework. Now, recall that gains from exchange is the advantages to a country in terms of increased consumption possibilities or greater GNP if it trades on the world market with the given amount of autarky production it has on hand, doesn't change production at all, just simply trades on the international market. And we're going to do this within a particular example with numbers just pulled out of the air. We've got a production possibility frontier that's concave to the origin, so it's a, a neoclassical model. And I'm just assuming that the price of X is $10 for every unit in autarky, five, uh, $10 per Y. So these are prices that pertain in the economy without international trade. And again, pulling numbers out of the area, assume it's producing 20X to satisfy domestic consumption, 15Y to satisfy domestic consumption. And that's depicted by this point uh, right here. On the PPF, this is the uh, combination that it produces without any sort of international competition. Now you'll note that if it's the country is limited to producing at most 20 units of Y, if it uses all the its resources in, into producing Y, or 30x, but it chooses that particular combination to satisfy domestic demand for both goods. So now we'll take a look at the gains from exchange. And remember, that's holding production fixed. And let's assume that on the international market, X goes for $20 for every X, and Y goes for $5 per Y. So this is a, an opportunity to sell X at a higher price on the international market than you can get uh, domestically. Now, the relative price of Y then is going to be 4Y for every X. Now, what does that mean? That means that if you sell one unit of X, you get enough money to buy 4Y on the international market. X is four times as expensive. So let's take a look at what the country can now consume of Y if it takes what the 15 it's got on hand and sells 20 units of X on the international market. Now, 20 units of X at these prices, okay, so you take these 20 units of X, you multiply that times 4Y for X, and what you have is they can turn that amount of X into 80Y. And you add that to the 15 units of Y that you started with. So they can now consume 95Y if they sell the X that they've got on hand. And, or they could sell a smaller amount of that. Okay. They can now afford to buy anything along this red line. Now the slope of this line is the world relative price. It's the 4Y per X. Now let's think for a second about what would happen if the country decided or tried to sell Y on the international market instead of X? You would take these 15 units of Y and be able to get just a little bit more X somewhere down in there. The country would be able, would, would do worse off by selling the good of comparative disadvantage on the international market, i.e. Y, and buying X. It makes sense for them to sell X, import Y. 
Now let's take a look at the GNP. Because okay? one of the one of the, the features of international trade is not just the uh, the consumption possibilities, but take a look at it in terms of national income. Now we're starting out with the same level of Y and X because it's a gains from exchange, and now looking at these prices instead. So we take our 20X, multiply it times $20 for X, plus we have our 15Y, multiply that times $5 for Y. So this is evaluating production at international prices rather than the domestic prices as an autarky. Okay, so this is the GDP with trade. So what we have is $400 worth of X plus $75 worth of Y for a total of $475. So what you see is, is that the GNP or GDP with trade, even if you don't change the production levels, increases from 350 to 475. Now a couple of other things to note about this. One is the good of export, X, its value has gone up. It's gone up from $200 to $400. That reflects that the price is twice as high. So you have an increase in the value of production of the export good, which is very typical of trade. The export industry has higher revenue. There's more money in this export sector. The import competing uh, sector, on the other hand, its price has fallen by half. It's gone from $10 per Y to $5 per Y. And indeed, we see that the value of production goes from 150 to 75. But since the overall national income has gone up, that means that the increase in the value of production in the export sector exceeds the fall in value in the import competing sector with an overall increase in national income. So this is, again, one of, we see this in many different contexts in trade, that when you open up to trade, when you are faced with international competition, what you see is that some sectors gain, some sectors lose, but that the value of the winners the value that, that are gained by the winners exceeds the, the losses of those who are hurt by trade. Now, having higher GNP, and for that matter, having this possibility of being able to consume 95Y instead of a maximum of 20Y, <clears throat> 20 in autarky, is possibly irrelevant for, for some members of the economy. Okay. If you think about it, those people who are stuck in the industry X, the workers, the capital owners, the people that are can't move out of the sector, don't get advantages from this new opportunity to sell X on, on the international market. So the import competing sector, Y, gets hurt the export sector X benefits. So, gains from exchange show us that by simply evaluating production at international prices and autarky prices, there's an overall gain in GNP. We're going to see that there are even greater benefits if the country's firms respond to these price signals Ultimately, this is a signal to produce more X and less Y. And we're going to see that there's going to be even greater gains from trade when 
when the companies are allowed to adjust. That's the gains from specialization, which we'll talk about in another video.